seated. Kevin? So we're um, kind of featuring our godly play Sunday school program today with an open house uh, after church and uh, to further accentuate the value of this uh, ministry here at St. John's, we're going to have a godly play, godly play lesson for our sermon. So if you're kind of in the back or on the outside and uh, want to get a little closer so you can see what's going on, uh, it might be a more rewarding experience for you. Um, if you're maintaining social distancing, that's fine too. But anyway, there's quite a bit of room in, in these flat trees here, which I know are generally considered to be off limits for Episcopalians. <laughs> However, today there's special dispensation. Uh, if any of you want to come in a little closer, now would be the time. And you guys instructed uh, Gabriel to zoom in with the camera for those who are online so they can see what's going on here too. There's lots of space up here in this front pew. Going, going. <laughs> this is the desert. It's not the whole desert, it's just a piece of the desert. But we need a part of the desert in our church because so many important things happened there to the people of God. The desert is a dangerous place. There is no food. There is no water. People die without food and water. Very little grows there. And so when the wind blows, the shape of the desert changes. People can lose their way. The desert is a dangerous place. People don't go there unless they have to. It takes courage to go into the desert. The people of God were in a land where the rains did not come. Without water, the crops didn't grow. There was no grain to grind up for bread. Everyone was hungry. The children cried in their sleep. The mothers and fathers decided they had to leave and go to another place to find food, even if it meant going across the desert. So they set out on their journey. was hard in the desert, but the people kept going to the land called Egypt. Hey. 
king of Egypt was called the Pharaoh. When the people came into the land of Egypt, they found food and work. But the Pharaoh trapped them. They could not go home again. They had to live where the Pharaoh said. They had to get up when the Pharaoh said. They had to go to sleep when the Pharaoh said. They had to eat what the Pharaoh said. They had to do the work that the Pharaoh said. They had to do everything the Pharaoh said. They were slaves. One of the people, whose name was Moses, went to the Pharaoh and said, let my people go. The Pharaoh said, no. Many strange things began to happen in the land of Egypt. And Moses went back to the Pharaoh many times and said, let my people go. The Pharaoh always said, no. Then something terrible happened. The oldest boy in every Egyptian family, even the family of the Pharaoh, died. The oldest boys in the families of the people of God did not die because they made a mark on the doors of their houses. They put the blood of a lamb there, and the angel of death passed over them. This time, when Moses went to the Pharaoh and said, let my people go, the Pharaoh said, yes. People hurried to get everything ready. They packed up all that they could carry. They made bread for the journey. But there was no time to put leaven in the bread and let it sit and get big and fluffy like the bread that you buy in the store. This bread flat. It was called laksa. And you can still eat this bread today. Every time you taste it, you can still taste this story. The people went as fast as they could. They were afraid that the pharaoh was going to change his mind. Suddenly, they heard the sound they didn't want to hear. The ground shook. The army of the Pharaoh was coming after them. The sound of the horses' hoofbeats on the ground and the wheels of the chariots were like thunder.
the army of the Pharaoh push the people up against the water. They didn't know what to do. But God came so close to Moses. And Moses came so close to God that he knew how to lead the people through the water to freedom. This one is so scared he can hardly move. This one is so scared she's running really fast. This one's really confused about what's happening. This one couldn't be happier. <laughs> this one's getting hungry. <laughs> this one is worrying about the things that she left behind. When all the people were safe, on the other side, the water closed up again. And they were free. The army of the Pharaoh could not get to them. They were on the other side in freedom. And they were so happy that they could not help but give thanks to God. And Miriam, the sister of Moses, led the dancing. I wonder what part of this story you liked best. The dancing. <laughs> what part did you like best? The somersault, the one who somersaulted through the water. The one who was so happy to somersaulted, yes. What part did you like best? Susan. <laughs> 